Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Bring a deck using only commons from all of MTG Arena. Persistent petitioners are banned. Alright, seems like a fun challenge. Huh, alright, Ancestral Mask is a common, so that could fit into the Hexproof deck. Elvish Visionary, another very good one, Soul Warden. So, Kiln Fiend even. Last time I remember the Monorette Kiln Fiend deck was pretty popular as well. So that's something uh, worth trying, Mindstone even. So far the Hexproof deck probably still seems like the most powerful thing that can be done. And maybe the Kiln Fiend red deck. So, let's try to build the Hexproof deck. So we had our Jungleborn Pioneer, Jade Guardians. I think last time I tried fitting in Lanor Elves to speed things up a little bit, but I don't know for sure. Pacifism could also be a removal spell we can play, if we really want one. But then we need the life gain, we need the Vigilance, the Flying was one of the new additions last time. Couple dubs I remember wanting against Death Touch. And then I don't think we needed blue anymore since we had Angelic Gift, so we don't need one with the wind as much, which cuts down on the amount of colors we need to play. But then Mark of the Vampire still seemed worth it. I guess we could play Aspect of Lamprey now too. So that's another life link enchantment. Yeah, he leads Pilgrim is also a new card we can play now. Maybe if I play Heliot's Pilgrim, I don't need to play black, and I can get away with just green-white, because then we can just more consistently find whatever keyword we need, and we don't need the eight lifelink enchantments. And then we could even play Trample, too. Warbriar Blessing could be decent. Ancestral Mask. Yeah, Pilgrim could be decent. So at the moment we're at 62. Am I missing anything important? We've got Flying, Trample, First Strike, Lifelink. This makes it big. Vigilance. Those seem like all the important keywords. We've got our eight Hexproof creatures. Lanor Elves to speed things up. Pilgrim to find whatever keyword we need. But I guess it's true we could play Sentinel's Eyes instead of Candlelight Vigil as a cheaper Vigilance enchantment. The only worry I have is that if we cut Candlelight Vigil we might be a little short on like power and toughness increasing uh, auras. But maybe with Ancestral Mask that's no longer really a worry since we just need one of those and we're good to go. Or yeah, we could split the difference, go like two Candlelight, two copies of Sentinel's Eyes. The game plan of the deck is pretty simple, just get a Hexproof creature in play. In this case we're interested in the 1-1 one, one token, or the Jade Guardian that can basically be a 4-mana 3-3 three, three with Hexproof, and then we want to load a bunch of Auras on it. There's no cheaper Hexproof creatures that I'm aware of. This is kind of the earliest we can get a Hexproof creature in play. Turn 1 Elves, turn 2 Pioneer, and then turn 3 we can start loading up with Auras. If we want it, removal, then Pacifism would probably be the go-to, and against a deck like Kiln Fiends, Pacifism is definitely a pretty valuable addition, so it's probably worth it to have one or two copies that we can maybe fetch up with Pilgrim too. Maybe I don't have room for Candlelight Vigil anymore. It's also possible four Pilgrims is too many. Uh, Envoy could be okay, making our auras cheaper. It doesn't help me get my Hexproof creature in play faster is a problem. The first priority is often just getting the Hexproof creature down. It's usually not too difficult to stabilize the board by putting one or two auras on it. The Envoy would help with deploying the auras faster, but it doesn't help get the Hexproof creature in play faster, so I don't think uh, it's what I need. Lifelink is usually one of the more important keywords. I think we want to max out on Devotion. Same with Flying. Trample I could potentially cut one or two. Vigilance. I guess I can cut the Vigil and just rely on Pilgrim and Sentinel's Eyes. First Strike is also not often needed, but it's nice against Death Touch if we don't have Flying, or it helps if the opponent tries to set up some sort of triple quadruple block situation to make it more difficult. So I want at least one dub in the deck that we can search up with Pilgrim. I don't have to play two. Now that I cut Candlelight Vigil and Jade Guardian's the only four drop, I can maybe afford to play fewer lands, because we have Elves too for ramp. 
Set us in training, I can only play on my own creature. Angelic Gift, I can also play on the opponent's creature if I just need to cantrip. Maybe I cut two trainings. Because, yeah, this isn't really a two drop. It's something we're going to play once we already have our hexproof creature in play. And while trample is nice, it's not like the super important keyword. And now with Pilgrim, we have multiple ways to use mana in the late game. So I don't really mind 24 lands plus 4 elves. So yeah, this seems fine. And then the mana base. I'm gonna want at least around 10 untapped uh, green sources for the Lenor elves. Only need single white, single green. So the green is gonna be the main constraint for the elves early on. So this leaves me with 13 whites, 15 green including 11 for the Elves. So yeah, the biggest problem with this deck is having, of course, a Hexproof creature in your opening hand, sometimes you mulligan into Oblivion, and then aggressive decks can sometimes go under you before you manage to set up a giant lifelinking creature. And I guess a control deck, if it counters all your creatures, could also be a problem. Alright, this hand seems pretty good. Got our turn three pioneer. Couple enchantments, both are colors. Can't complain. Opponent on kind of the red green for power matter stack. Ancestral Mask is definitely going to be a big deal here. I could start loading up on this 1-1 one -one token. I could play a 3-3 Jade Guardian first. I guess this turn I could go Ancestral Mask, and then next turn I could go Devotion plus Angelic Gifts. And then our token's gonna be pretty big already. Or I could Devotion first, in case I want to chum block with a lifelink token. Yeah, I guess we'll Devotion, and then I can play the Elves too. The alternative would be to just play the Jade Guardian, so we can start off with a 3-3 Hexproof instead of a 1-1. But with Ancestral Mask, I think it works out fine this way too. So we're gonna take a bit of a hit. Gotta play defense, hope they don't have any pump spells. And then just draw more enchantments. Eventually find a vigilance enchantment. So we can play both, and then I'll put the counter on the 6-6. Six, six. Can't really attack. But this is usually where we don't mind being with a stalemate situation. Just trying to draw more enchantments. Our decks got plenty of those. Opponent is going to make an attack, so they can pump this once. 
So I'm not gonna block it. Only pumps power, so I could double block the Arynx to trade off, and then I would still be taking 12 plus 3 Trample, but I also gain 7. So I could chump, I could not chump. Uh, not sure if it's necessary, but I guess I'll chump. And that should seal the deal. So if I were to attack, gain 15 at 25, there's no way they can kill me. Alright, so this hand's missing white mana, but it does have everything else really, so we'll try. Monoret, so this is gonna be the real challenge. Can we survive the aggression? And they have the turn to kill fiends, so... Not loving my chances, to be honest. They're probably gonna kill the Pioneer and attack with the Giant Kiln Fiends. Yep. I could even decide to chump. Alright, trample means it's not really profitable to chump. Well, they've got kind of the dream start here. I think I blocked the Firebrands. And I don't think I can start loading up on this 1-1 one -one with my current situation anyway, so I'm gonna have to hope to draw land for Guardian. And then the first one might trade with Kilnfiend before we play the other one. Alright, that's what we needed. Hopefully they don't have the first strike uh, cantrip. Alright, they're just gonna burn me with another skewer. <laughs> Alright then. <laughs> Sometimes I have it all, not much you can do. Fine hands. So far we've been pretty lucky to have Jungleborn in our opening hand. We haven't had uh, turn 1 Lander Elves into turn 2 Jungleborn Pioneer, which is kind of the best start we can have. This looks like maybe a black-white life gain deck. There's no Johnny Sprite Mates, but they can play with uh, Soul Warden. There's a bunch of common payoff cards, like the 5 mana 4-4 four four that drains for one whenever you gain life. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play Jade Guardian here.
And then next turn can give it lifelink, can make it big. And there we see the Apicure. 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. Pilgrim was a good draw. That's probably just going to end up getting another Ancestral Mask. <laughs> Inheritance making the Jade Guardian bigger. Because, yeah, these old cards often look at uh, both players. If you remember, cards like Lord of Atlantis pumped Opposing Merfolk, and the Zombie Lord also pumped Opposing Zombies, and Slivers were also symmetrical. So, this is still from that era. Well, a clean 20 damage here. Yeah, Ancestral Mask is definitely a good upgrade for this deck. Alright, this is our first clear mulligan. This we can keep, although it is... Still somewhat speculative, I need to draw two lands. Angelic Gift I can potentially cycle on a an opposing creature. So it's not great. But being on the play potentially helps offset the fact that we're gonna play a creature on turn four. As our first play. But what often happens is if you have a hand that's a little slow. It also means that it's maybe faster to stabilize since we're gonna have more auras in hand to enhance our hexproof creature once we do deploy it. So if we miss a land drop, I'll probably gift the opponent's creature if they play one. I mean, putting the gift out there also makes Ancestral Mask better in the future, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I think I'll still gift here. And played before playing my land in case we draw a Blossoming Sands. Alright, perfect. So we'll get to play my Guardian on turn 4 at least. Sure, my opponent has a Flying Druid, but... That's not a big deal. Got our Ancestral Mask, can go Mask into Training. Take three. Now we do have to be a little bit careful that our opponent doesn't figure out a way to kill their own Druid of the Cowl. Imagine we block Paladin and then they kill their own Druid, then I would lose my Guardian. Which would be bad news. But doesn't look to be the case. Can't really attack them yet. Need to wait for another Angelic Gift or Heliot's Pilgrim finding Angelic Gift. Dub here would be useful. This is the type of board state where First Strike would come in handy. But yeah, our opponent can't really attack me just with a Druid for one, which is not going to kill me. Just keep on loading up the Jade Guardian, I think. So yeah, Helios Pilgrim is probably my best draw. 
Another ancestral mass could be very strong. Angelic gift is perfect, although I don't think we're attacking yet. I'll have to do some uh, math here to find out if we can. So let's say I do attack for 16. These all trample, these ones I can block. So it's kind of scary to attack. But I guess I gain 16, so I'll be at 30 plus life. Play another pioneer. Got some lifelinkers to block with as well. I guess if I can avoid it, I don't want to let them draw any cards in case they can somehow mess this up. So let's just block here. And then soak up some trample damage, maybe? I don't know. This prevents the most damage and doesn't let them draw any cards, which seems fine by me. Yeah, finding Ancestral Mask against the Gruul deck seems pretty important, since we do need to get our creature big quickly, since those 5-5s uh, five and 5-4s five don't mess around. So if we're like stuck with a 3-3, a, three -three, a life-linking, flying, first-striking creature, it doesn't really matter. We need it to be big, and Ancestral Mask is the best way to do it. Alright, so we've got an interesting hand, got the Elves and a Pacifism. Which, you know, could be good against certain starts from our opponents, but no hexproof creature, which is typically a mulligan. This is better. Alright, up against the red deck again. And we don't have a particularly fast start, but uh, hopefully we hit our land drops. Turn to crash through, so probably no kill fiends or no second land. Alright, well, can't training the opponent's creature to draw cards, which is the difference with the uh, angelic gift. So far, the opponent's start is not insane, but they might be holding a bunch of burn spells. Land is good. So we'll probably see a shock on the pioneer. And then I have to decide if I want to chump with the token, hope to draw land for Jade Guardian, or if I just take the two. I guess I'll take two. I mean, it's probably better to just dub, to be honest, since that technically stabilizes me. I mean, I guess it could have, like, Sure Strike, but that seems unlikely. They are probably playing the one-mana Warlord's Fury. Huh. Are they playing other pump spells, like Infuriate, maybe? I don't think I can take two free damage here. And even if they do have Infuriate, it's not the end of the world since I have double Jade Guardian in hand. Alright, they do have Infuriate. That's fine. Now 
Now I can block the Lava Runner again. Although this time a Rimrock Knight would be enough. Do I trade? I mean, I could. I have another Guardian coming up. If I take it, then what's my play next turn? Probably want to get the Lifelink enchantment as soon as possible with the Pilgrim. I could play the Elves too. And I guess a Pilgrim can block the Rimrock Knights. I think uh, Squire's Devotion is what I want. And both Elves and the Pilgrim are fine to block the Rimrock if needed. Yeah, that's pretty good. Kill Elf draw cards. But we don't mind too much if the Elf dies there. Alright, so now I don't think I can afford to block the Lava Runner. Since I really want to get the Devotion going. So I'll just block like this. Probably still forces the Infuriates if they have it. So this probably implies that they have another Rimrock Knight in hand. So if they have another Rimrock Knight, I'm not going to be able to block with Jade Guardian, so I might as well attack. So we suspect one of these to be Rimrock Knights. And a Skewer on the token. I'm fine jumping with the Lenor Elves on the Prophets. They might keep Prophet back in an attempt to block and pump, but that still wouldn't... Yeah, I guess it could be enough if I didn't have another way of pumping Jade Guardian, but... Sentinel's Eyes is great. So they're probably going to have to stay back, use their pump spell defensively, and then we can kind of wait and find more Auras and Jelly Gifts also does it here. Well, this mono red opponent had a much uh, slower draw than the one we faced before. Alright, sweet. So we got uh, 4 and 1 on our first attempt. So yeah, the Hexproof deck seems pretty strong. Just gotta watch out for those turn 2 kill fiends and maybe if there's counter spell decks out there, hopefully you're on the play and you get to play your Jade Guardian before they keep up their counter spells. That's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.